Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of very common problems I see come over my bench. And this first one is a complaint that the chain won't turn. Now the customer sometimes comes storming in yelling about what a piece of crap we sold them. Uh, other times they come in with the chain just hanging off the bar wondering what to do. And other times like this they've managed to get the chain back on the bar but it won't turn and they don't know why so we're gonna take a look at this uh, step by step and diagnose what might be wrong with this we can see that the chain brake is released so that wasn't holding it up but if you look right there there how I had to pull that chain out of the bar um, the drivers are damaged and this happens when the chain is allowed to run loose and falls off the bar and the chain catcher catches the chain um, and it damages the drivers puts a little nick on them and makes them a little wider than the groove in the bar and it binds up uh, obviously because it was in a homeowner's hands the first thing I did there was um, take a look at how the chain rolled over the rim drive or over the sprocket and now I'm just verifying that they have a 325 pitch chain on a 325 pitch bar pretty much can be done by eyeball but for visual effects on the video we use a little gauge so if you look real close you can see the kind of highlighted shiny spots where the lights reflecting off the tips of those drivers uh, that's where they're smashed now there's a lot of ways uh, you could make, do this repair you could tell the customer that he wrecked the chain and he needs a new one well there's a lot of life left in this chain and there's no reason for that you could hand file each driver it takes some time or you could do it this way with a, a power disc grinder and just touch up each driver and you know a, a low repair bill and the customer is back on his way um, cutting wood so that's what we're going to do now I know some might argue that I'm taking some life off the of drivers. Well, you could also argue that you're giving new life to a damaged chain. So, however you want to look at it, uh, doing this isn't shortening the life of the bar or the sprocket or the rim drive. And odds are pretty good that if they ran it, to the point of the chain falling off they're gonna do something else and damage the chain or hit a rock or drop it in the ground or whatever I want to add one thing to this video uh, you need to make sure that the saw is oiling you know there could be a legitimate reason why the chain came off if you look at this bar there does not appear to be any burnt spots in it at all like it got hot and I guess I didn't do a close-up of it, but the chain was kind of oily. But I'll double-check it when it's all done and make sure that it's flinging oil. So we'll just clean out the groove on the bar, bar the saw back up, and uh, give it a test run. Wow, this guy's fast. Make sure there's gas and oil in it. It turns now. 
The next most common problem I see come across my bench is chain break problems. Uh, I get it that people that don't normally run chainsaws don't always understand the chain break function or you know how to get around issues with the chain break. It, you'd think it would be common sense that you shouldn't have to pry the clutch cover off of the saw, but uh, a lot of people do it. And after they've pried it off and bring it in, a lot of people won't admit to having had to pry it off. It doesn't matter, whatever. That's why we're here. We'll fix it. So we're going to do a step-by-step -step, uh, assembly of a chain break. And stick around to the end because I have a special way of resetting these in the shop that uh, some of you guys that might you know, work in the shop have access to some of these parts to make it real quick and easy. So one of the keys when assembling these chain brakes is uh, use a little bit of grease. Uh, grease that pivot pin in there and I should have greased the uh, the joints of that uh, knee joint there but I don't think I actually put any grease on those in this video. So I like to use a scrunch with that tapered end on it for compressing the spring, but as you can see, a screwdriver works just as well. Uh, a needle nose pliers pushing the nose into that spring works just as well. It's really uh, not that big a deal to put these springs in, and, and a lot of people make a big fuss about it. There is a locating pin on the cover, and you want to make sure that uh, that rubber seal isn't damaged or broken off it actually locates that cover on the saw and you want to check the locating hole on the saw make sure it's not full of debris then uh, if it was packed full of debris and that cover didn't push in all the way then the cover might not sit flush uh, it might not seal against the bar you might drip oil rather than pump oil into the bar it, you might have the clutch drum running rubbing on the brake band um, just make sure you check that pin so we're kicking it old school again using a manual screwdriver but we're getting her done So this brake can be reset on the saw in the field. Uh, it's not that hard to do. You want to make sure that that cover we just screwed on there is flush. And you can see that the brake is set right now because there's the band is not pushed out and expanded against the uh, cover. So if you look at this area here just below that lever we're gonna try and get this metal tab in that area and then slide the cover over the studs and just kinda of hold it in place there and then we can release the brake you'll see that that lever is moved up now check the brake band and make sure it's sitting on top of all those little perches there if it's sitting in front of one of them then it's going to bind on the clutch drum how the cover goes on freely so if you have a spare 550 or something like that just the cases this one's from an old uh, first version 550 it makes setting these brakes real quick and easy customer brings it in you slap it on there reset it hand it back to them and they're on their way so that's all I got for you today on the two most common problems I see come across my bench. Thanks for watching. You know, it just occurred to me while editing this video that uh, we reset a lot of chain brakes for free. So maybe I could build a little, uh, a little outdoor display with this jig mounted on a post and some instructions. You know, it'd be 24-hour service. Any day that the customer screws up, they can just show up. They don't even have to show their face at the front counter and have that embarrassing moment. They could do it right outside. 
bolt their clutch cover to the jig. The instructions will tell them to insert a dollar bill and then pull back on the lever and voila, their chain brake is reset. Have a nice day. So that's all I got for you on two of the most common problems that I see come over my bench. Thanks for watching. Later.